Hi, this is Bilal and this lecture is based on classification of bacteria. Actually, we can classify the bacteria on the basis of different factors, like we can classify them on the basis of cramp staining, on the basis of morphology, on the basis of anatomy, on the basis of pathogenicity, on the basis of relation with host, on the basis of environmental factors, and we can classify them even on the basis of nutrition. So we have different factors on the basis of which we can classify the bacteria. Now in this lecture, I'm going to classify the bacteria on the basis of cramp staining. And on the basis of cramp staining, we have cram positive bacteria, we have cram negative bacteria, and we have some bacteria which are neither cram positive nor cram negative, and these are known as acid force bacteria. Now for example, if you want to distinguish the cram positive and cram negative bacteria, you have to remember this table. That in case of cram positive bacteria, you have thick peptidoglycan layer. While in case of cram negative bacteria, you have thin peptidoglycan layer. You can remember it with some mnemonics that peptidoglycan is starting from P and P means positive. So cram positive bacteria have much more positivity in the form of much more peptidoglycan. Similarly, cram negative bacteria, as they are cram negative, so they have less positivity in the form of less peptidoglycan layer. Then we have tetroic acid and lipotetroic acid and it is present in cram positive bacteria but it is absent in cram negative bacteria. You can remember it from that this is starting from T and T means true. So all the cram positive bacteria are always true while all the cram negative bacteria are always false due to which these are present in cram positive bacteria but it is absent in the cram negative bacteria. So these are some mnemonics by using which you can remember the difference between cram positive and cram negative bacteria on the basis of these two features. Then you have lipid content. Actually in case of cram positive bacteria you have less lipid content but in case of cram negative bacteria you have much more lipid content as compared to that of cram positive bacteria. Now this thing is very important, the outer membrane because outer membrane is not present in case of cram positive bacteria but it is present in case of cram negative bacteria as you can see this diagram that this is you know cram negative cell wall and it is cram positive cell wall so in case of cram negative cell wall you have outer membrane but in case of cram positive cell wall you have no outer membrane so this thing is very important Similarly, we have periplasmic space. So periplasmic space in case of cram positive bacteria is present in some. But periplasmic space in case of cram negative bacteria is present in all. So as you can see this, that this is cram negative cell wall and it is cram positive cell wall. So actually periplasmic space means that it is space in between the outer membrane and the inner membrane. Or you can say that it is space in between the outer membrane or the cytoplasmic membrane. So basically it is space. As you know that in case of cram negative bacteria we have outer membrane due to which we have some certain space in between the outer membrane and the inner membrane or the cytoplasmic membrane due to which we have periplasmic space in case of cram negative bacteria. But in case of cram positive bacteria you don't have any outer membrane. Then how can you expect that periplasmic space in case of cram positive bacteria. So that is why Periplasmic space in case of cram positive bacteria is present in some, but periplasmic space in case of cram negative bacteria is present in all. Similarly, if you are talking about this permeability, then cram positive bacteria are much more permeable as compared to that of cram negative bacteria. And the reason behind it, for example, you have to consider this thing that permeability means it is the ease of molecule to pass through the molecular membrane. Now for example in case of cram negative cell wall you have outer membrane. So in this case molecule has to pass the outer membrane then the inner membrane in this way its permeability is getting reduced. But in case of cram positive bacteria you don't have outer membrane so molecule can directly pass the cell membrane. So in this way the permeability is going to be increased. Then we have another factor which is you know the factor of crystal violet that cram positive bacteria are retaining the crystal violet but cram negative bacteria are not retaining the crystal violet. Actually this thing is very important because we are going to classify the cram positive and cram negative bacteria on the basis of staining and 
in staining we are using different dyes in which we are choosing crystal violet so these gram positive bacteria will retain the crystal violet but these gram negative bacteria will not retain the crystal violet and then we have to treat the gram negative bacteria with a counter strain which is known as safranine and they are retaining safranine because of which they are giving pink color under the microscope but gram positive bacteria are giving purple color under the microscope because they are retaining this crystal violet similarly if you are talking about the examples of gram positive and gram negative bacteria then in case of gram positive bacteria you have staphylococcus streptococcus bacillus clostridium but in case of gram negative bacteria you have Escherichia coli you have Neisseria you have Proteus you have Salmonella Shigella and many other bacteria which are coming under the gram negative bacteria so this is what the detailed difference between the gram positive and gram negative bacteria then we have acid force bacteria because those bacteria which are neither gram positive nor gram negative and these are known as acid force bacteria these acid force bacteria actually containing 60 percent lipid layer and these are containing mycolic acid and for observing the acid force bacteria you have to do the acid force staining actually these acid force bacteria are much more similar to the gram positive bacteria so if you are discussing the examples of acid force bacteria then you have many examples like you have mycobacterium and in case of mycobacterium you have many species of mycobacterium like mycobacterium povis, mycobacterium canine and many important species which is very important in case of humans it is known as mycobacterium tuberculosis because that mycobacterium tuberculosis is affecting the lungs and causing TB. Similarly, as you can see, this is the cell wall of acid force bacteria, which are containing the tetroic acid, which are containing that peptidoglycan, which is also present in gram positive bacteria. But with this, the unique thing in, in that acid force bacteria is that they are containing mycolic acid, and this mycolic acid is unique in case of acid force bacteria. So, this is all about the basic difference between the gram positive bacteria, gram negative bacteria and the acid force bacteria.